because of course he is on the task force. We also have present with us at this workshop Mr. Babu Shrestha, shout out Babu Shrestha, he's also on the task force. We aim to have annual meetings and we are in, in constant email contact. So they help me as the coordinator to do my work. The vision of Aladdin is to work for a global learning society where information and knowledge on added learning is created, well documented and made accessible to all. So it's not all about organizing information, it's also about creating it, documenting it and making it accessible. The mission is about networking and capacity building of added learning documentation and information services for a global network of networks. We want to thereby inform policy making, research and program development by making accessible relevant information. You can see that I try to focus on three different sectors, the policy making sector, the government sector, research, universities, academic, but also program development at the grassroots levels. Then we come to the strategic objectives that Aladdin is working as an information broker between those different levels by sharing relevant information, correcting the uneven distribution of information as at that point in 97 people were thinking there is so much information in the richer countries and so little in the fewer. How to make sure information is shared, the rich know about things happening in the south and vice versa. And Again, the last point, you will find it again and again, again, capacity building, providing training in added learning knowledge management. The most important knowledge platform is the Aladdin website. Actually, I show you what it looks at the moment, but it's currently being redesigned. I want to show the design of UNESCO as it is a UNESCO network, and it's simply an old web page, so new developments have happened, and I want to make it as interactive and as useful as possible. So the new website will also contain, of course, information about all the Aladdin members with links to their websites, email addresses, and uh, it's two pages of information on every member. You will get the added learning links, which are already on there. It's more than 200 links in the area of added learning documentation. And when we collected them, we found that most of the collection of information that we're linking there has been done by Aladdin members, which was a nice surprise to see that the Aladdin members are very active. At the moment, if you would search on this website for Paldin or Aladdin India, it would take a lot of time for you to find it. So on the new website, there will be very um, prominently a point saying capacity building, Paldin, etc. I also want to add to the new site a communication platform like a forum but the website address will remain, so just click on it and see what will happen in the next weeks. I already mentioned to you, when I now go through the years, what happened with Aladdin to give you an example of networking, how it all came about at this workshop. They also decided at the workshop, the first thing we have to do is to see who is out there. We have to find those documentation and information services. So in 1998, the first thing they did was to create a directory of members. I show you the current directory, you have to imagine it like a book like this, with information on all members. At the moment, the fifth update of this directory is in printing process and will be published very soon. Once they knew who is out there, they were thinking in the next step to start a program to invite people from all regions who will sit down for six weeks and think what can we do in the regions to improve the scenario for added learning documentation. So they had a fellowship program. And following the program, they had a seminar where people came together to discuss what shall we do with Aladdin next. And actually, at that seminar, they gave the name. So it's a little similar to the Paladin development. Uh, you start before having the name, the same for Aladdin. Personally, I'm very happy that they have chosen that name. I will say later, I have not been Aladdin coordinator at that point. It was somebody else. They have chosen the name. And I think it's an excellent example for a name that is catchy. People can remember it. Even the lamp, I like the logo, although it might not be modern and all that, but I like it. As I get a lot of comments on this, like they would say, Aladdin is, has the spirit of knowledge and, and uh, all these references to the fairy tale of Aladdin. 
and people just remember the name. I find this, I wanted to point this out. It was just a year later when the Aladdin website was created. I have shown it to you. And then there was a seminar for the task force where they agreed on the working modalities. How shall we work together? Who is the coordinator? How, who can become a member? Who should be a member? Once you start this network, you realize there are a lot of administrative issues involved. You see now there is a gap. 2,000 is missing. There is a sad reason to it. The first Aladdin coordinator, Ursula Giere, she fell sick and unfortunately she passed away. So it took some time until myself in May 2001 started at the UNESCO Institute and became the Aladdin coordinator. So you see Aladdin picking up then in 2001. But I would like to say the conference I'm mentioning, the ICAE World Assembly, where an Aladdin workshop took place, was actually organized by the task force. So even without the first Aladdin coordinator, they stayed active. They organized the workshop, and by the time it happened, I was in my job, and I could join the workshop, and they welcomed me with open arms. So it was nice to see that Aladdin did not, with the passing away of the first coordinator, disappeared, because sometimes these things happen if very active people are behind something. So I started working. I went to the workshop in Jamaica. It was actually a workshop where a lot of grassroots people were. So the outcome of that workshop were very grassroots orientated. And I hear similar feelings from your side. They wanted to know how can we document our grassroots experiences, how can we collect and organize our grassroots information. They also decided at that workshop it would be good to have an email listserv, so a connection of all email addresses. And I followed up on this and started the Aladdin email listserv in January 2002 as a forum to share ideas, comments, concerns, or I would love to see requests going through this email listserv. Just as a practical example, somebody in his resource center might need information on, I don't know, maybe literacy in library facilities for prisoners, and the person would like to know if anybody else has experience in this area so the whole global community could answer. We started the email listserv as an open listserv, meaning anybody could send anything. Just again, to share my experience, we changed it to be a moderated listserv. So that means every email which is sent to the list first comes to me, I check it if it's uh, relevant for the community, and then I send it out. I find this important, I wanted to avoid that something is sent out and 10 people write back, thank you, thank you, thank you, because this is happening. And I know there is a criticism to it as it's some kind of uh, control, but I have to say I never turned down a message. I just maybe made a message more fitting to the audience. I just turned down messages like thank you, or if they're really just to me, this can happen, just dear Lisa. So then I will say it's not of use to the whole Aladdin community. And I do this on purpose, as being an information professional myself, I think we all suffer, or many of us suffer from information overload. So I try to keep messages focused. In the same year, we had a task force meeting in Canada, and then I mentioned already the added learning links that were added in November 2002. Then in the year 2003, we had a very nice program, the Cody International Institute, they offered a course on managing NGO resource centers. And as I found the course very relevant to the needs of NGO resource centers, we gave five scholarships to five Aladdin members from the regions of the world. And I have to say, until today, I am still in touch with some of them. And it was, it's very wonderful to see how they could rise in their profession. So one went back to her country to set up a resource center in the Adult Education Center. Another one, I can see by now, she, she has a better position in her, her organization, and she said to me recently that she started to do a lot of training based on this course, which I really liked. Then, updating the Aladdin membership directory this summer, I could see how one of them is now not anymore just one of the librarians, but became the director of her library. So this was a very good capacity building initiative. 
as you can see, it was a three, more than three weeks workshop, so it was a very good thing. Summer 2003, we were very proactive in trying to find more members for Aladdin, but it was interesting to see that people at the beginning did a good job. It's, we don't get many more new members at the moment, so I think we more or less have the most important added learning, big added learning information centers in the network.